Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're on Tomb of Heroes, watching Kron Aberrant face off against Gadget. Gadget is actually a quite new player. It's the first game we've seen of him casted. And he's currently on the west side of the map playing Vekir, while Kron Aberrant is on the east side of the map playing Grekim. Kron Aberrant's still apparently setting up his opening. Pause, just getting everything going. And Gadget, on the other hand, is in slow mo setting up his opening, not paused, like most players do. Interesting choice, though. He may just be because he was newer. I'm not sure how many games he had played before this one, but I'm fairly certain he played quite a few. So, not his first game, but I guess he's not aware of the fact that most people paused. Granted, pausing is not necessarily the best idea. You can definitely handle it just fine in terms of the amount of commands you need to do in slow mo. It's just not typical. Not sure if he's... I don't think he's actually queuing either. He may have been aware of the ability to queue at this point. I just... I don't see him queuing. I notice he is just waiting until Zyndir has done one order before another one goes on, so... He may not be queuing. That's... possibly a newbie mistake. Unfortunately, Akron does have a rather unusual queue button of control by default. I switched mine to shift, and you can do that fairly easily. But it is, by default, Control, which some players have a hard time getting used to. Kronemarin setting up four Octos, one of them for RPs, but looks like he's going for an attack. A very early scouting run. Unusual in Assassin mode, given that the Akron scout just fine. And Gadget's actually sending his, Gadget and Kronemarin both sending in their Akrons to the other side with nothing else. Kronemarin does find Gadget's base and sees that he's going for very light economy, but nothing more than that. Gadget actually... Surprisingly not building a lot of resource processors. He has enough money to build some more. Not sure why he isn't. Might have just not realized he has the money to do it. Kronauer, on the other hand, is... Focused on these Octos here. Going for the attack for the Octos. Very light raid. Probably won't keep this up. Probably will echo it out or cancel it out. But he might actually go for it. I'd be surprised if he did. Could be powerful, though. I mean, if he does manage to pull it off, kill off some of the infantry here, that would at least make cost. It seems unlikely, however. Oh! Sorry about that, people watching on stream. Don't worry, the YouTube one will not have that problem. So, when I get that version, it won't be. Yeah, sorry about that. I meant to switch over for the live viewers. It's like watching a hockey game on the radio. Except there's no ice, or pucks, or sticks. Might be an idea for a later mod. Akron Hockey. Not sure how that would work. Anyhow. Gadget building up a bit more on his economy and has finally got his Akron in for scouting. Kronauer, on the other hand, thinking... Well, he hasn't lost his Akron, but his Akron was destroyed further in the future, so he's going to be echoing that out. Or not, actually. Just keeping it inside the base. It's, is Kronauer going to be echoing that out, or is he just going to be... Just going to be running away with it, so... It looks like on the timeline he is avoiding that damage. He will not lose his Akron ultimately. Or you know what? No, kind of think of it. That was actually Gadget's Akron that was being threatened. Regardless, not gonna be destroyed anytime soon. It is inside this base. There is an Octa coming up, but probably not gonna be attacked. The pair of Octas that were coming in here are just about to arrive, coming in from the south side of the base. This is from Gadget's point of view. He's about 15 seconds up from Kron Aberrant. And fast forwarding, closer to 30 seconds now. Gadget jumping back, not really seeing anything else. He did build another Zion Veer. No depot yet, which is a little bit surprising, but on Tomb of Heroes, not terribly surprising. While Kron Aberrant, his Octos are moving into a position just to expand probably later on. This base right here. Yes, he is exactly doing that. Building a couple RPs right by this expansion overlooking the center. And another Octo is going over to the south side. So Kronemarin spreading out quite a lot, making sure that he doesn't get spotted, he has, that his economy doesn't get fully found out. Gadget probably doesn't suspect anything. This is a very large map, but most players actually don't even make use of the expansions towards the south. Not very frequently. Certainly not as a hidden base. Or at least a hidden couple RPs. This should be a bit of a surprise for Gadget. And those two RPs are going to be important. I mean, it's still... At this point, Gadget is going with 6 RP, so both players have about the same economy, but Gadget is thinking that Crown Everett has much less and might be suspecting a rush. I was suspecting Crown Everett is just going for a very early low economy attack and trying to win with that. On Tomb of Heroes, that won't work, or at least very rarely will. Not without proxies or similar tricks, but 
course, that's not what's happening. Gadget is... Even with Crown Emerald for economy, both players have 6 RPs. Crown Emerald simply has spread himself out a bit more. Though Crown Emerald having spread himself out more means that he is building the RPs later than Gadget would be. So Crown Emerald slightly behind in economy, and Gadget very much aware of what Crown Emerald's up to. Crown Emerald, on the other hand, does have his Akron from his own point of view in position. From Gadget's point of view, he doesn't, but Gadget still being spotted. And Gadget actually is ahead in economy, getting one more RP on top of Crown Emerald. So Crown Emerald... Doesn't even have a QP income yet, and Gadget is getting that. This would probably explain why Cryon has allowed Gadget's Akron to exist in its main base for so long. He hasn't gone and built... Actually, it is kind of surprising, because he does have enough QP to build an Octopod. I don't know why he hadn't thus far, and he actually still hasn't. Gadget, on the other hand, his base has, from the looks of it, destroyed Cryon Aberrant's Akron, though Cryon will probably not be allowing it to actually die. He is keeping it to the south, he is not moving it forward, so this damage will ultimately be removed. Still rather important, though, he's... Well... I mean, admittedly, it's not that important. It is an echoed out attack. But close enough to the playable past, it could have been a bit of a risk if Cryonimert had not echoed that out right now. Now, Cryonimert is still getting more Octo, still building more economy, not at all worried about getting an Octopod. And given that... Oh, where's that Akron? Okay, the Akron for for Gadget has gone to the north and will be scouting down again. Gadget sending it back into Crown Amaran's main base, seeing what's going on, and will not be seeing anything particularly meaningful. Just use the Octo attacking it and nothing else. Bit of economy, no tech, no reefs. Very surprising about that, actually. Why are there no reefs? It's almost four minutes into the game, and I understand, of course, they are building more economy, but building a reef is not that hard to do. Two is actually coming up now at Crown Amaran's point of view, the 424 mark, so we're going over this time again. Gadget, his Akron moving over this time and being very smart about it, he's jumped back making sure that stuff has, if stuff has changed then he knows about it. He does see the two Seppies, so he's aware that Reefs will be coming up at the 4 minute mark. This is about right, and there are the Reefs, one of the Reefs, the other Seppi possibly on patrol, but probably, no, he is going for a Reef. Did see exactly that. So Cron Avern setting himself up for the standard start, but he does, he is a bit late about it. I'm not sure, Gadget might suspect that Cron Avern does have the additional RPs around, but he might be thinking Crown Emerald is actually just behind an economy and he's up ahead, getting a false false sense of security. Zion Pulse being built up, possibly a second one coming up. I see nothing though. Gadget does have enough money to build a couple more, and he is building another one with the Zion Veer, but he could just be building it straight from the depot at this point, and he is doing exactly that. So four Zion Pulsers coming up, five Zion Pulsers coming up, dealing a lot of damage to Crown Emerald, it's Akron, Crown Emerald, well aware of what's going on now, sees the, well, if he goes over to that point in time, which he hasn't thus far, it's actually focused quite a bit further in the past, and I, he really needs to double check that damage, because that's extremely important damage, and he's not right now. He is half a minute down from there. Getting advanced structures, however, if he gets a Spire soon enough, he should be able to afford air units. He is getting a Faro. We did see one being spawned right down here. That should become a Spire, but from there, he barely has enough money for a Sepipod. He might be able to get a Faro pod by the time it's done. It's just tight for cash right now. Gadget, on the other hand, healthy for his cash. He does have design pulsers coming up. And once all five of those come up, we should see an attack. I see no skip teleport, however. This is a bit surprising. Why Gadget has not gone for skip teleport to allow himself to more effectively attack this is beyond me, honestly. And the Akron has been spotted. Crimer's Akron actually very close. This is what I meant by being risky. He's very close to Gadget's base. Gadget could really just go south and kill it. I mean, Crown Emerald has not even moved it away. It's still here. This is Crown Emerald's point of view. He has not moved this Akron at all. If Gadget does a delayed delayed unplayable pass to edge attack... Actually, Crown Emerald right now, I think he's walking into death. He's walking his Akron right up into the Zion Pulsers. He's going to see what's going on, but he's not going to be able to get out of the way fast enough. Zion Pulsers are able to destroy that Akron. So, Crown Emerald losing his Akron. He does not have hardly any playable time left. He's... Obviously escaping, but being near the Unplayable Past Edge, he has very little chance to affect anything else. Getting another Faropod, or getting a Faropod. With Skip Teleport being researched for all of Gadget's... All of Gadget's Zion Pulsers, double checking that one. But yes, he is getting it for all of them, and if he goes down and gets that Akron, which he can spot out, he knows it's there. His Akron should have seen it right then. If Gadget goes down and starts hitting it, it will be the game, but... Crime Rate able to escape, just barely, the Skip Teleporting Zion Pulsers. If they move fast enough, they might have a chance. This is near enough to play fast edge. Crown will not be able to deal with it. Both players very low on Chrono Energy. So once Gadget's done, he has done skip teleport, but 
No, he's jumping back near the unplayable fast edge. Looks like he's trying his best to be as close as possible to the edge before trying to chase after the Akron. Not... I want to see what he's doing with this because if he is not going for that Akron... He's going for the Akron! Targeted directly! Nice prediction, too! Got the location almost exactly right. But is he not... Is he not going for the Akron? There we go. Okay, now he's going for the Akron. Dealing in a fair amount of damage, but only getting about half health before it gets out of range. Needs to teleport again, and able to stop it. This is very near the edge. Crime will be able to escape. He will be able to take another path to get out of here. But he does lose the Akron, and Gadget propagated that slightly. So Crime Everett... Actually, no! He has barely any chance to get out of this at all. This Akron is very near death, but the Fire Pod is the only chance. The Fire Pod is able to get rid of one of the Zion Pulsers and the Octopod as well. And the other Zion Pulsers... Able to kill the Akron in time, so Crime is still out of an Akron. Might lose his Zion Pulses, but I think that was a successful suicide mission. And it looks like... What? No. Gadget is not... Tele Why did Gadget not teleport? That... That appeared to have been an error. I have no idea why that happened, but that Zion Pulser was going to teleport, and it just didn't. That must be painful, because that... Okay, that really cheated Gadget out of a win right there. Like, Gadget won this game. That was just an unfortunate bug at the ba at a really bad time. Not really sure why not sure why that happened. Admittedly this is an older version. I, it might have been fixed or something might have changed it. Now Crime Pointing out was blocked by the Octopods, and I kinda see that yes the Octopods were possibly in the way. Skip teleport should be able to get around that though. It's usually it should part of it is supposed to be able to compensate for other units in the way by teleporting near the target location. Not necessarily on it, just near it, so you can still get in. And Gadget building up even more Zion Pulses, but he should get a few Teth Pulsers as well to get rid of that Fire Pod. Teth Pulses, maybe even get Arian's Shin Turchers. Shin Turchers being able to detect it. Zion Pulses are coming back around to try to scout it, but this Akron has been fully healed, so almost no effect from that destruction. And Chronomart getting Chronoporting! How did I miss this? Having... getting so focused on the near win that Gadget had and not focused on the Chronoporting, Chronomart getting this Farpod and Octopod back, just to make sure that no edge attacks come in from the front. Granted, the Zion Pulsar was coming in from the back, so it's not going to make that big of a difference, but still, Crimer having Chrono Porting is going to be a big deal. And Gadget appears to be going for the Q-Plasma Resource Processors. Very good idea. Crimer will be able to defend against this, obviously, having Chrono Porting in the future, but if this is damaged enough, it could cause enough of a paradox. It could stop it from being researched entirely. And... Farpods, however, coming back here to try to deal with damage they can as well. So both players attacking each other's economies, going for the harassment. Nothing Gadget can do, however. Gadget does not have any of his inventory nearby or any of his Shin Veers. And he doesn't have... He has a couple of Teth Pulses coming up. He has no Foundations. That's another detector he could use. Having the Foundations or auto... And especially with Auto Defense, that'd be a great thing to have right about now. I don't know why Gadget isn't building it. I'm not sure if he's aware that Foundations detect. But they do. It's really worth noting that Foundations do, in fact, detect cloaked units. And Crinamert now getting... Oh, looking at the wrong resources. Gadget is the one with the slightly lower key plasma, but Crinamert getting Chronoporting. Apparently not being affected too much by that damage that happened, and... The Farpod's doing everything they can. There was a Shin Tur Shin Veer did pop out. Did manage to detect these. But like I said, he's clearly not aware the Foundations detect cloaked units. Which they do. It's... I don't know if it's even documented in there. I... Double check, it might be in the tooltip. Foundation. It doesn't actually say that, no. That's that's an oversight. Okay, good to know. Foundation does not say that it detects cloak units, but it does. Foundations do detect cloak units, and they're probably the best cloak detectors that Vecchior can... Yeah, Vecchior can get Shin Beers for cheaper, but Foundations last a bit longer and are much faster to build. However, Gadget not caring about that, just going straight for the kill. And... Gadget's Akron actually out of the way, so Crimer isn't killing it directly, but Crimer can still teleport back, or Chronoport back to kill it. Not doing so, however. Not even Chronoporting back much to defend against this. I'm a bit surprised. Okay, Gadget is just getting skip teleport on all of his Shin, on all the Zion Pulsers at the 1159 mark. So once that's done, he should be able to finish off the Akron, but Crimer's Akron half health still healing up these reefs. How much energy do they have left? Two of them are drained. Another one, which is out of range from the Akron, is not quite drained. But the ones that are in range are completely out of energy. There's nothing they can do. And Gadget... Oh, okay. It looks like Gadget, according to the timeline, was actually able to prevent some of the damage coming in. In fact, stop the attack completely. He may have managed to get a detector 
Looks like exactly we. No, never mind. Crime are jumping back further. It looks like he's scouting out, scoping out, figuring if he can send back some units to attack with. Oh, sorry, that's Gadget's point of view. I'm my mistake. That was Gadget's point of view. So Gadget actually did save himself with the cloak detection. Crimehammer's point of view, however, is on the playable past, right behind the edge, and seeing the damage that his Akron took, quite a lot of damage as well. And wait a sec, there are no far pods around here. There is a Chrono Port, however, so that was successful. But it looks like Gadget was successful in getting rid of the, the far pods and. Now getting rid of Crimer's Akron, Crimer much further in the future, trying to avoid this, but not able to do so. Gadget, on the other hand, just ripping off what's left of Crimer's base. He definitely has enough Zion Pulsers to deal with everything here, even without having to destroy the Akron at that particular time. So Crimer is double checking the Implable Pass, seeing what's going on there, what happened with his far pods, and they appear to have dealt enough damage. Certainly didn't lose out on anything, but. No, they still obviously were not in position to defend the Akron when it really mattered. So, Kron Aberrant is pretty much out of luck at this point. I don't think he's anywhere on the timeline that's not either unplayable past or just unplayable because his Akron is dead. So, even with that change there, it's there is a change in the timeline here. Kron Aberrant is dealing a bit more damage. Actually, dealing damage to these Zion Pulsers here. I don't know if that matters, however, the Zion... And Damaging Gadget's Akron. Bit of a race to destruction of the Akrons, but it looks like Gadget lost his Akron just slightly sooner. So Kron Aberrant will win by a hair, while Gadget not quite able to deal with it. Though, no, never mind. Gadget's actually escaping. His Akron moving out of the way. He jumped back and changed that up. Very good move because that way Kron Aberrant has lost his Akron completely, and Gadget has not. So Gadget will win this game. He will actually get the win he deserved. So, Crown Aberrant, realizing he's dead, appears likely to throw in the towel, and doesn't realize that Gadget has actually escaped. Or, has he escaped? Oh no, Gadget hasn't escaped. That was a later iteration. That actually is being undone. So, never mind then. They, it is a race. I think Gadget did, in fact, Gadget did die about a second sooner than Crown Aberrant did. Or Gadget's Akron died about a second sooner. And Gadget has Chrono Pointing, but he has no Slipgate or anything to work with it, so Gadget has lost barely, and that must really hurt, because he had won the game right at the start. But that is pretty much it. That's the game. I, there's really not much more to say about it. Definitely a very entertaining and close game, but really it just came down to that fact that Farpod dealt damage just faster, and the Reefs were here for healing. Another reason why Foundations would have been a really good idea to have. Not just for detection, they also heal nearby units. That is actually part of the tooltip. It's not missed. And Elimination Defeat. Haven't seen that in a while, but Gadget has lost. He did die first. Both players lost their Akron, so a Pyrrhic victory for Kron Aberrant. And a very painful defeat for Gadget. So we'll be back shortly with another game. Just stay tuned.